chapter two, everybody. Ah ha ha ha! My teacher fried my brains. We haven't gotten to the brain frying part yet. Also, if you haven't seen this, I mean, if you haven't read this book yet, ho ho, you are in for a treat. I've read all these books like maybe twice. This is probably my third or fourth time reading through them. Uh, they're just so genius. Especially the third one. The third one just blows your mind. But this is the second one. I'm focusing on the second one right now. We will get to the third one eventually. I need to calm down. I need to stop getting excited. Okay, chapter two. It's called An Alarming Situation. I've been held back a couple of times, so I'm bigger than most kids in my class. But Orville was bigger than most... Oh, <laughs> I read the same line twice. But Orville was like a small mountain. I swallowed hard. The Vietnamese kid named Phan Le Du started to giggle. Go get him, Duncan, he said. I could have killed Phan for that. Or Phone, whatever you want to say. <laughs> phone. My name is Phone. The problem was, I nearly had killed him a couple of times last year, since I used to beat him up about once a month. So I could see why he would have been happy to watch Orville cream me. What did I do? I asked, stalling for time. Nothing, said Orville. I just don't like your face. Come on, outside. I can rearrange it. Oh, shut up and sit down, said a voice from behind me. It was Susan Simmons, the girl who had unmasked the alien last spring. Susan Simmons was one of the five best-looking girls in seventh grade. Susan Simmons, who is probably the smartest kid in our class, n now that weird Peter Thompson was gone. Susan Simmons, who walked up to Orville Plummer and said, go away. That's all she said. Just go away. You want to know the amazing thing? Orville went. Actually, the first thing he did was turn pale. Then he went. I turned to Susan. How did you do that? I asked. She shrugged. Ever since last spring, a lot of people have been afraid of me. The dumber they are, the more they're afraid. Orville probably thinks I stole some secret weapon from Brock's home and I was ready to use it to drill a hole through his skull. Is that true? I asked, remembering the way Brock's home had melted the school doors shut when he was making the, his get getaway. I also remembered how much time Susan has spent exploring Brock's home's house. Maybe she had found something there. She just smiled and said, what do you think, Duncan? Then she turned and walked back to her own table. I was frustrated. I wanted to talk to Susan some more. I felt good when I was with her, but she had her group of friends, and just because I had helped her fight the alien didn't mean she was going to let me in. Okay, I guess I hadn't really helped, but I'd been involved. Me, Susan, and Peter, we were the ones who really who had really known what was going on. You'd think that would count for something. I was also embarrassed since it didn't look good to have a girl save you from being turned into dog meat. Um, things didn't get any better for after lunch. I still hadn't figured out what to get, how to get around the building, so I was really late for sixth period class, which was math. I tried hard to find it, I really did. I promised myself I would do better in school this year. So far, that idea wasn't working out very well. Also, I knew kids would laugh if I came in late, especially if they aren't if they had already heard about Susan saving me from Orville. To to top things off, I knew from Patrick that the math teacher, Mr. Black, was pretty cranky. So I really wanted to get there on time. I kept running up and down hallways looking for Mr. Black's room. My brain felt like it was melting. I couldn't make any sense of the building. When I finally did find the room, I, I was panting and my heart was pounding. Ah, Mr. Duggle, I presume, said Mr. Black when I walked in. I will accept your lateness today. However, in the future, either be here on time or plan to spend the period in the office. I had had it. Between my brother, my father, the man catcher, and Orville Plummer, I just wasn't ready to have anyone else dump on me, especially when I had try been trying so hard to do something right. Does your mouth ever do th do things without getting your per your permission first? Mine does. I did it right then. It did it right then. I looked at Mr. Black, and my mouth said, 
bug off, Pinhead. About three seconds after the words came out of my mouth, I realized what I had done. My skin turned cold. At the same time, I felt a hand grab my arm. What did you say? asked Mr. Black, yanking me around and staring me s staring into my face. Nothing, I whispered. I didn't say anything. Mr. Black pulled open the door and shoved me through it. You can try again tomorrow, Mr. Double, for today I think you will be better off out here. Inside, I could hear the, kids, hear the kids laughing. I really hate it when people laugh at me. If Mr. Black thought I was going to stand in the hall until the end of period, he was wrong. I was getting out, out of this hall and out of this school. I was heading down the hall when I saw the fire alarm. I figured since I was leaving, everyone else might as well leave too. That's not true. I don't know what I figured. I just know that I reached out and pulled it. The bell started to clang. Doors flew open. Screaming kids poured out of the classrooms. It's the aliens, they cried. The aliens are back. <laughs> it should have been funny. It would have been funny, if not for one terrible fact. When I pulled the alarm, it sprayed purple ink all over my hand. It didn't take much brain power to figure out that the ink was to mark people who turned in false alarms. I had to wash the stuff off. I ran for the boys' room. Duh, brilliant move, Duncan. That's exactly what they expect you to do, which shouldn't have been too hard to figure out, except that I was either too scared or too stupid to manage it. Fortunately, my brother had warned me about this. I shot back into the hallway. Things were still in an up uproar. Some kids were actually crying because they were convinced the alien invasion had begun. Teachers were shouting to trying to get them out of the building. As the fire drills go, this was a total disaster. Jamming my purple hand in my pocket, I pushed through the confusion and headed for the back door of the school. The door opened onto a loading dock. Three or four empty cardboard boxes were stacking at the, at the far end. Closer to me stood a big green dumpster, already starting to stink in the afternoon heat. What I really wanted to do was take off and run, but since about half the school was outside already, I couldn't do that without being caught. I had to hide someplace. Well, at least I wasn't in the boys' room. I figured the man catcher would, was, right there, was there right now, looking for a kid with a purple hand. I pulled my hand out of my pocket and, star and s stared at the purple stain. It was like a big sign that shrieked, Duncan did it! Duncan did it! Where could I hide? I peeked back around the door. Things were quieter now. Maybe I could hide someplace inside s until school was over. I opened the door, slipped slipped through and almost swallowed my tongue. The man catcher was heading right toward me. Ooh. That's the end of chapter two. It was kind of a short one, or I think I just read fast because it was dramatic. But anyways, chapter three is called Not Telling You. Ha ha ha. You're just gonna have to wait. But I probably will read it in a few minutes. But my camera is dying, so I have to get a battery. Anyways, Hope you guys enjoyed this chapter. The next one, I, I forgot about how this went, but I'm just now remembering, and it's so good. Oh my word. <laughs> the next chapter is when it gets very, very good. Very good, very good. See you then.